Thank you, everyone. It's so great to be here today. So we're going to be taking a bit of a journey today, and I'll start with my own. Our first stop is 2014 in Hong Kong. This is my son, Grant. He's Chinese, seriously. He was born in Hong Kong on July 31st, 2014. And that's my husband, John. When I was pregnant, he kept telling everyone that we were having a Chinese baby. As you can see, John is not Chinese, right? And this is a photo from Grant's 100 days celebration with my colleagues in Hong Kong. That's Smithfield's parent company's CFO, Mr. Guo, or Gordon. That's his American name after Gordon Gecko. That was also John's idea. You see a pattern forming here, holding Grant. The 101st days is a traditional celebration that marks the end of the first three months of life for a new baby. In other words, it's the end of the fourth trimester. The traditional Chinese believe that the first 100 days is when the baby and the mother are most vulnerable to the elements, so they were advised to stay indoors to avoid illness. I did not stay indoors to avoid illness, to uh, combat boredom. I was out of the house in only a few days. So, um, Anyway, another tale explains that in the days of yore, it was rare for a baby to survive the first 100 days, so when they did, it was a cause for celebration. So when Grant turned 100 days, we had a big celebration in Hong Kong. So, what does all of this have to do with today? Well, I moved to Hong Kong in 2013 after Smithfield was acquired by WH Group, which is a holding company based in Hong Kong. And do you know what else happened in 2013? Well, after four years of infertility struggles, I found out that I was pregnant with Grant. <laughs> Timing is everything, right? My seemingly local role greatly expanded when John and I and Grant, still in utero, left our home in Williamsburg, in Williamsburg, Virginia, and settled into life in one of the world's most competitive financial and business hubs, 8,000 miles across the world. But before we go on, let's rewind for a second to the early 2000s. I originally joined Smithfield Foods in 2002 as a corporate finance assistant in the mergers and acquisitions department in our New York City office. I had just graduated from Rutgers, I'm a Jersey girl, with degrees in finance and economics. And after a couple of successful acquisitions, I moved to our investor relations and corporate communications team. Smithfield was publicly traded on the New York Stock Exchange at the time, where I was a liaison between the company and our Wall Street investors. Over time, I was promoted within that team and eventually became vice president of investor relations and corporate communications for Smithfield. I remained in that role until, in 2013, as I mentioned, Smithfield was acquired by WH Group. Shortly after the acquisition, because of my decade of experience in investor relations and corporate communications for Smithfield, WH Group offered me the opportunity to relocate to Hong Kong and lead their initial public offering, or IPO. WH Group debuted on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange in August of 2014, just days after Grant was born. It is now a publicly traded company with shareholders around the world. John, Grant, and I returned to the US a few months later. That's Grant enjoying the Cathay Pacific in-flight entertainment. Back in the US, I assumed my current role as, se of, as Senior Vice President of Corporate Affairs, where I lead the corporate communications and public, relation, re public relations efforts of Smithfield. In this capacity, I also continue to serve as a contact for WH Group's investors in the US and oversee government affairs and sustainability initiatives for the company, as well as a few other responsibilities. So back to today, 2018 in Nebraska, we're going to be talking about changing governments and changing trade, impacts from global to local. As Leonardo da Vinci said, learn how to see. Realize that everything connects to everything else. Everything connects to everything else. Changing governments and changing trade impacts you, impacts all of us from global to local. I'm a prime example. A combination of changing governments and changing trade impacted me. Globally, it brought, it brought WH Group and Smithfield together in a strategic combination that created the world's leading pork enterprise. It unlocked exciting growth opportunities in the large and rapidly growing Chinese pork market. Locally, the partnership has benefited our employees, producers, and partners. Also locally, personally, it took me to Hong Kong. Everything connects to everything else. On our journey today, I want you to keep in mind that there are many places in the world, many opportunities for those of you who are students to connect to. I was looking forward to this talk, hoping that there would be a lot of students in the audience. I'm not sure that there are a lot of students here today, but I thought I would tailor uh, a few of my remarks to them specifically. 
My connection, my link, is Smithfield Foods. So who is Smithfield? Let's watch. And we produce good food responsibly. Smithfield Foods is the world's largest hog producer and pork processor, operating in 25 states and five countries around the world. In the U.S., we are the leader in a wide range of fresh pork and packaged meats categories with popular brands including Smithfield, Eckrich, Nathan's Famous, Farmland, Armor, John Morrell, Cooks, Kretschmar, Gwaltney, Curly's, Margarita, Corando, and Healthy Ones. Our portfolio of popular brands makes us a top supplier to the retail, export, food service, and deli channels. Since our beginning as a small town meat packing company, progress and innovation have been central themes in the Smithfield Foods story. We believe there's a right way to do business and that achieving success in social and environmental responsibility is every bit as important as achieving success financially. In providing delicious and nutritious meat products for millions of people around the world, we are also an industry leader in sustainability efforts. To us, the way we make our products is no less important than the food itself. It's a way of doing business that has been important in developing strong partnerships with many top retailers and food service distributors, both in the U.S. and around the world. We've built an entire supply chain on the principle of sustainability, from the farms that raise the grain to feed our hogs, to our suppliers, to the plants that produce our products, to those who transport them, and our customers who sell them. Our philosophy of responsible operations rests solidly on our sustainability pillars of animal care, the environment, food safety and quality, helping communities, and people our employees and their families. Our social purpose, to improve food security and alleviate hunger by donating millions of pounds of high quality nutritious protein, is supported by our generous charitable giving program and hunger relief initiative, Helping Hungry Homes. Maintaining the popularity of our brands takes a focused, continual effort from passionate people. More than 52,000 employees worldwide come to work every day to make good food in a responsible way. Our forward-looking, socially responsible focus has led to many industry firsts. More than a decade ago, we became the first pork producer to develop and implement a comprehensive systematic animal care management program to monitor the well-being of pigs on company-owned and contract farms. Smithfield Foods was also the first company in our industry to receive ISO 14001 certification, an international gold standard for environmental management systems. We were the first to commit to transferring all pregnant sows on company-owned farms to group housing systems. We were also the first pork producer to provide an ingredient glossary for consumers and the first and only company in the industry to report antibiotics usage. We are also the first major protein company to undertake a greenhouse gas reduction commitment, pledging to reduce emissions 25% by the year 2025. We believe in what we do and why we do it, so people around the world can come together for delicious, nutritious meals, which are produced responsibly and prepared and shared for family and friends. We are good food responsibly. We are Smithfield Foods. You heard in the video that Smithfield is the single largest U.S. pork exporter. It is this leadership position in exports that has, in large part, fueled Smithfield's growth over the last 20 years. It's why Smithfield was such an attractive acquisition target for WH Group. Exports have taken Smithfield from local to global and around the world, or at least the world according to pork. So let's look at global pork trade and its relation to U.S. pork production. Here's the situation. In the U.S., we produce more, way more pork that, than can be consumed within our shores, roughly one quarter more. So obviously, U.S. producers need to find customers in other places, global places. If you look back to the year 1994, the U.S. was actually a net importer of pork. The pork industry was a local supplier. 
But today, just 24 years later, the U.S. is the number two exporter of pork, behind only the combined countries of the European Union. It is now a global supplier. Since 2010, U.S. pork exports have, exports have increased in value by nearly 35 percent. And last year, 2017, was a record year as we exported close to 5.3 billion pounds of pork and variety meats, worth more than $6.2 billion. That represented an increase of 8% over the previous year. So where is all that pork going? Here you can see the top six export markets in terms of volume. In terms of dollar value, it's the same six countries, though in a slightly different order. So clearly, we are helping to feed the world. And this is pretty good news for the world and for us. Pork is the number one consumed protein in the world, and 95% of the world's population lives outside the U.S. That's why the U.S. exports nearly one quarter of its pork production. Our products go to more than 90 countries around the world. This is all good news to Smithfield's 42,000 domestic employees and thousands of U.S. independent contract farmers, suppliers, and vendors. Why? Because all that meat is produced locally in rural communities across America, like Lincoln, Nebraska, for example. International trade is not only important for growing our business, it also enables us to create more jobs and ensure our farmers remain competitive in the globalized economy. Together, we all rise to meet the challenge of the world's demand for pork, and we all benefit from it. But we also depend on it, and that depend dependency makes us vulnerable to certain challenges, challenges that include changing governments and changing trade. One set of challenges is in China, where the demand for pork is unpredictable. Imports vacillate considerably depending on market conditions on the ground. China has 1.38 billion people, many of whom are moving rapidly into the middle class and desire more and better quality protein in their and their families' diets. And pork is what's on the menu for Chinese consumers. Pork is by far the leading protein in the Chinese diet, representing more than 60% of all protein consumed. In fact, the Chinese consume more than 20 pounds more pork per capita per year than Americans. During the last 15 years, Chinese per capita consumption has grown by 26%, while U.S. per capita consumption has actually shrunk by 3%. Pork is the number three protein in the U.S., but the number one protein in China. China is responsible for 50% of the world's pork consumption, and their demand is still growing. That's right, half of all the pork in the world is consumed in China. They really like pork. <laughs> The trajectory of U.S.-China relations is something that the industry is watching closely, given how deeply intertwined our economies are. Annual bilateral trade is well over $600 billion, with agriculture a large component of that number. But tensions in the U.S.-China relationship continue to rise, as does a growing sense of competition between the two countries. Another challenge is competition from the EU. Pork from the EU is often more competitive than pork from the US, which gives them an advantage. For example, when the EU-Japan Free Trade Agreement is finalized, the EU will have favorable access to the Japanese market. While the US currently dominates pork imports to Japan, when the EU gets preferential access, that position will be in jeopardy. For this reason, our industry needs to emphasize the importance of bilateral free trade agreements with Japan and other key trading partners to the U.S. government. Closer to home, Mexico receives a large and growing portion of U.S. pork exports, which were up 15 percent last year. But what about NAFTA? Trade agreements like NAFTA and the United States Korea Free Trade Agreement, another large trading partner have created tremendous opportunity for Smithfield, the pork industry, and the U.S. Another challenge, already exceeding domestic demand, U.S. pork production is predicted to rise another 5% this year, and all that pork has to go somewhere. The bottom line is this. The U.S. pork industry produces the safest, highest quality pork products in the world. But the success of the industry is contingent on free and open export markets, which drive growth right here at home. There are challenges and uncertainties that muddy the picture for the future. Many of these challenges and uncertainties come in the form of changing government and changing trade, both on a global and a local scale. So how is Smithfield responding? 
The first way is through communication with elected officials and other government stakeholders from a very local grassroots level in our plant and farm communities all the way up to the White House and beyond. Our challenge is to educate lawmakers and ensure that our nation's decision makers understand the industry, our company, our employees, and the importance of free and fair trade. We all have to deliver this message all the time, every day, consistently, concisely, and loudly. We must be heard. We also hold ourselves up as an example. Smithfield's success after the WH Group acquisition proves that exports and foreign investment in U.S. companies, which can help facilitate trade, can be good for business, employees, communities, and the country. Again, with 95% of the world's population residing outside of the U.S., positive foreign relationships are vital to Smithfield's continuing success and ongoing operations. Since the WH Group acquisition in 2013, Smithfield has increased capital expenditures in the U.S. by more than 20 percent, spurring economic development in local communities. The company has experienced consecutive years of record business growth. We have added 1,000 new American jobs, and not one single Smithfield job has left the U.S. as a result of WH Group's investment in the company. The bottom line, exports benefit American farmers and manufacturers, create jobs, and reduce the U.S. global trade deficit. I'd say that's music to the ears of everyone in Washington, D.C. Another way we are responding is through the concept of vertical integration. What does that mean? It means that we control the quality of our product from the birth of our hogs to the, to the production of fresh pork and packaged meats, and then on to our customers and our consumers. This is a huge advantage because it gives us an unparalleled level of traceability, food safety and quality and control, and allows us to improve on a continuous basis. A great example of how our vertically integrated model gives us a competitive advantage in exports is ractopamine, or the lack thereof. In the U.S., producers widely use ractopamine. It's a, an FDA-approved feed supplement that produces leaner meat more efficiently. However, China, Russia, and the EU have banned its use and even re require third-party verification that pigs are not fed ractopamine. To meet this demand, Smithfield has leveraged its vertically integrated platform to produce pigs without using this supplement. Another way Smithfield is responding to the worldwide demand for our products, particularly in China, is through WH Group. WH Group owns 100% of Smithfield and 73% of Shunwei Development, which is the leading pork processor in China. That makes Smithfield and Shenway Development sister companies. We operate completely independently from one another, but we collaborate in one very important area, exports. Through WH Group, Smithfield exports high-quality meat from the U.S. to its sister company in China to meet the growing demand for pork. This, benefit, this benefits all American pork producers and the entire American agricultural and manufacturing supply chain by reducing domestic supplies, which improves and stabilizes profitability right here in the U.S. During the last four years, since WH Group's acquisition of Smithfield, Smithfield's exports to China have increased more than 200 percent. Smithfield's Made in the USA pork is sold in China as Smithfield branded fresh pork, used in the production of Shunwei packaged meats products, and also used in the production of Smithfield branded high-end packaged meats. These Western style sausage, bacon, and ham products are manufactured at an American style plant in Zhengzhou, China that uses USDA food safety standards and US technologies to achieve the highest level of food safety and quality. We also recently launched an effort to sell Smithfield products online in China. JD.com, one of China's two largest business-to-consumer online retailers, is the exclusive online sales platform for Smithfield's pork products in China. We're also cooperating on big data, cold chain logistics, and food traceability. The partnership with JD.com enables high-quality imported pork products to go directly to the dining tables of Chinese consumers. And many Chinese are actually receiving JD.com products via drone. That's right, JD.com has several different types of delivery, dr delivery drones and a vast drone airport infrastructure that allows them to connect with consumers even in the most rural parts of China. This connectivity fills gaps in the domestic market of fresh imported pork products and brings traceable, safe, and quality products to consumers. Another way we're responding is through our industry-leading sustainability program. The world is growing. 
the Earth's population is expected to be 9.7 billion by 2050, with most of that growth occurring in Asia and Africa. The U.S. pork industry has a real opportunity to help feed these populations. But how will we ever feed that many hungry people? Let's watch. Everyone needs it. All 7.5 billion of us. Better make that 9 billion by 2050. How will we ever feed that many hungry people? Good question. But there's an even tougher one. How will we ever feed that many hungry people safely with quality food while caring for animals and the environment and communities? How will we ever feed that many hungry people responsibly? The good news is we have a plan to produce good food responsibly. The pork industry provides about 20 billion pounds of meat worldwide. Modern farms are temperature controlled, well lit and well ventilated. It keeps animals safe and comfortable and helps slam the door on disease. That's one reason the USDA lowered pork cooking temperatures. There's more good news. One study found that non-renewable energy used to produce one market pig is down 80% since 1975. We were the first in our industry to commit to convert company-owned sow farms to group housing systems. And 100% of our pigs are raised under the strict expectations of our animal care system. What else is being done to meet the challenge of producing enough responsible and sustainable food? Newer feeds that help reduce environmental impacts. Better vet tools to help care for animals. Enclosed buildings that protect from weather, predators, and disease. And one processing facility's water reuse system recycles 500 million gallons a year, reducing water demands by almost 4 billion gallons so far. We could go on, and we will go on, year after year. Are we perfect? Absolutely not. But are we working hard to improve every way we can? Absolutely. Meeting the challenge of producing enough responsible and sustainable food will take just that, all of us working together to come up with lots and lots of solutions, each one more brilliant than the last. Who knows, perhaps someday an entire city will run on energy created by animal manure, or maybe the farm of the future will go up, up, up to conserve land. Sure, some ideas might sound a little crazy at first, but meeting the challenge of producing enough responsible and sustainable food will take creativity, not to mention genuine concern for the billions of us who share this planet, and the billions more who will in the future. Because after all, doesn't everyone deserve responsible and sustainable food? Smithfield Foods, good food, responsibly. I love that question. Doesn't everyone deserve responsible and sustainable food? At Smithfield, we certainly think so. It is only by doing business responsibly and sustainably that we can meet the challenges and the opportunities of feeding a growing world population. So we've been on quite the journey today. We've been to Hong Kong, New York City, China, the EU, Mexico, and Washington, D.C. from 1994 to 2050 and beyond. I'd say our passports are pretty full, and we've really racked up some frequent flyer miles. Speaking of which, I proudly accumulated over 110,000 frequent flyer miles when I was pregnant with Grant. I did the math, 110,000 miles in 40 weeks, enough to fly our families to Hong Kong for Grant's arrival. Anyway, our last stop is right back here, 2018 in Nebraska, changing governments and changing trade, impacts from global to local. Remember, everything connects to everything else. Changing governments and changing trade impacts you, impacts all of us from global to local. To the students among you, I would say the future is yours. Feeding a growing population responsibly is going to take a lot of work by a lot of people for a very long time. And I hope some of the things I've talked about today give you at least some glimpse of where you might fit in to that effort. Whoever you may be, there are opportunities. Wherever you're from, even if you're from New Jersey like me, you might just find yourself on your own journey to help solve tomorrow's challenges, perhaps even going to exciting places like Hong Kong and beyond to do it. On a final note, let me say that it is an honor to have had the chance to speak with you all today, the next generation of leaders in international trade and global finance. Ambassador Vetter, I'm truly grateful for your inv invitation to this inaugural symposium, and I'm wholly impressed by the work coming out of the, the Yiter Institute. Guided by your tremendous leadership in trade and agriculture, I have no doubt this will continue to be a preeminent institution, a fitting way to honor the legacy of Clayton Yider. Thank you.